Hi everyone, so welcome to today's video. This is gonna be another pregnancy update video. My last one was weeks 11 through 14, and so this is gonna be 14 through 18. So it's not quite where I am currently, but it is a month's worth of updates in one video, which is kind of what I've been doing, kind of gathering some notes and sharing with you guys just things that have been changing um, over the course of a previous month and just kind of doing a quick little update. So I'll have my previous videos kind of pop up in the card section like just randomly throughout the video so you can kind of see if you're interested um, what my symptoms were finding out in the beginning first trimester stuff so obviously now I'm in my second trimester and um, it's been quite different so kind of like a recap my first trimester I did have quite a bit of morning sickness and I had aversions to pretty much everything, including water. <laughs> um, so now in the second trimester, things are a little bit easier food wise. I'm able to eat pretty much anything and, you know, just be fine with food and being around food. That was a thing that I couldn't be around, like certain things, <laughs> which is so weird in the beginning, but now it's gotten much better. I'm able to go longer between meals. Um, I should normally be snacking between my meals and I do here and there. Um, but if you're not kind of familiar with, you know, just some tidbits of my life, I have a son who's almost eight and my daughter who's 18 months. Um, so I've got my hands full. So sometimes I don't get to eat exactly at lunchtime or my snacks. And so I just kind of like on the go eat. Um, like if I make the kids peanut butter, sandwiches because they don't like jelly well my son doesn't but um i will cut the crust off and then i end up eating the crust and drinking some water and then going on to the next thing or chasing after an 18 month old downstairs in the basement so i don't really get a chance to sit down and eat like all of my meals um so i try to do the best that i can but i do feel like i can go longer between meals and i try to make like breakfast pretty big um and so i get up early I try to before the kids get up to start working on breakfast and I feel like when I eat a full breakfast it kind of fills me up and keeps me full longer and I have been able to kind of go longer stretches if that makes sense between breakfast and lunch um, and that has been great it's been great adjusting to being able to eat things um, I did have an appointment um, after my last update video that I posted so I'm these appointments are super quick. I think they want you in and out, probably because of COVID. Um, I remember them being, you know, just a little bit more lengthy because I'm going to the same OB clinic that I did for my son and my daughter. Um, so they used to be a little bit more lengthy, especially with my daughter. I was high risk pregnancy with her and I would be seen very frequent and they would like take their time and be very thorough. Now it's just kind of like zip zap and you're in and out. So my last appointment, everything is fine. Um, Nothing major there. The heart rate was 143, so still thinking it's a girl. I have my anatomy scan coming up, so that's going to be obviously after this video gets posted. And I'll have to find a cute, clever way to share with you the gender. Um, I still think it's a girl. I have this feeling. I don't know, maybe because my pregnancy is kind of mirroring exactly like my pregnancy with my daughter Everly. Also, the heart rate is very similar to what hers was, um, but it also could be a boy. Like... We don't really know. So I'm super excited because that's coming up and I feel like because of this whole COVID thing, you know, kind of like scheduling appointments has been a little bit hard getting in um, and just being able to get appointments um, right at 20 weeks, for example, for the anatomy scan. It's, you know, they kind of do it a little bit before or a little after, just whatever they have available. But I feel like that appointment is going to give me more relief because then I'll know. Um, you know, they take so many photos and they tell you and if there's anything that's kind of off, maybe they need to redo the ultrasound. Um, and I feel like when I get the results from that, I just feel a little bit more at peace. I don't know. I just, I don't know. And I also get to see the baby again. They haven't been doing a lot of ultrasounds this time around, I think, again, because of COVID. So... Um, I will keep you guys posted on the results and what they say. I am going in for more blood work. I mentioned in my previous updates that I had um, a little bit of itching. I think I mentioned it um, just kind of randomly through my body. And it's just um, 
not in any like specifically like targeted area like for example just my arms it's just kind of random and that's how it started with my daughter and I was diagnosed with cholestasis of pregnancy so it required medication um, blood work frequently and an induction at 37 weeks so I have my blood work scheduled to go do that because I am feeling a little itchy this time around as well and I want to go ahead and just kind of stay on top of it um, and just make sure that my bile acid levels are not higher anything I think it's anything above a 10 is an automatic diagnosis of the cholestasis of pregnancy and there's a whole protocol that they do if you get diagnosed with that and I feel like if I were to have it it's kind of scary because the condition itself um, if it's not monitored and you're not on medication um, it leads it increases the risk of having a stillborn and um, it the risk goes up after 37 weeks so with my daughter I was scheduled right at 37 weeks to come in and be induced the whole process took two days because she's, she's stubborn um, but um, they got me in right away so it's something that they don't really mess around with because it's a very very dangerous thing so I feel like if I were to have it this time around it would obviously suck because I don't want that I would like to be able to experience going 40 weeks I would like to experience my water breaking on its own because that's never happened with either of my two pregnancies prior to this one um, they've always broken my water for me at the hospital because I've been induced both times with my son and my daughter so it would be nice to kind of experience that and see what that's like um, but then again I think you know they always say the third comes flying out so if my water breaks and am I gonna make it to the hospital in time or am I gonna have a baby in the car uh, so I, I don't know I just I would like to go 40 weeks if I can um, but I wouldn't obviously be happy about having it but I feel confident in the protocol because I've been down this road before and I feel like because I know what needs to be done it's just a little bit easier to handle I don't know that's just kind of like how I see it so I'll keep you posted on the results for that. I'm also getting some, like a full panel for more genetic testing. Um, part of that is gonna be the Down syndrome testing. I did have the cystic fibrosis, sickle cell, and a few other things, and I was not a carrier for any of those. And I don't think I mentioned that in my last update video. Or I don't, I can't recall. That's still another thing. Pregnancy brain is a real, thing I think I talked about that in my last video and it still seems to be like progressively getting worse um, but I do have some blood work coming up and again that'll all be in the next update you see um, I will let you know how that goes but so far everything has been fine I busted out my pregnancy pill <laughs> um, the same one I used when I was pregnant with my daughter I have been feeling like I've been tossing and turning a whole bunch through the night and I feel like the pregnancy pillow kind of helps give me a little bit of support on my back so that's exciting that I have that again and um, I've been having like lower back aches like it just kind of randomly throughout the day I could be at the sink washing dishes and I can feel it or if I'm like bending over a lot trying to you know pick up toys or running after the baby and just kind of trying to like keep at what she's doing and stuff I will feel it or if I'm like squatting to play with her or something like that or picking up things I when I stand up I can feel that lower back ache um, which is something that I had with her as well when I was pregnant with her and I tried a pregnancy support belt but I think I got the wrong size so I think I have to go with a smaller size this time around and try that and see how that works but that's really one of the only like newer kind of symptoms is that lower back got some breakouts I didn't have breakouts in my second trimester with my daughter I had pretty good skin I from what I remember so this is kind of odd I don't know if it's a makeup product that's making break out and I haven't figured it out it could be all the junk that I've been eating because <laughs> I have been craving just you know a bunch of things quesadillas um, ice cream cake all kinds of things and I don't deprive myself of any of those um, things also Kind of going back to my first appointment, well, not my first appointment, but my last appointment, um, I had gained so far 10 pounds, which is fine. Um, the midwife said, you know, 25 to 35 is usually what we kind of tell women that is, I guess, an amount of weight. But I gained 40, 40 pounds with my son and 41 with my daughter. So I still have a little bit more. 
but I am noticing a little bit more fullness in my face. I don't know if you guys can tell that in the videos, these last few videos I've posted, but um, my clothes are feeling a little more, more snug. So I've been wearing a lot of graphic tees that I've ordered in larger sizes. And, um, you know, it is what it is. It's part of the whole pregnancy process. And I know that I, it'll come off slowly postpartum. So I'm not really concerned, but so far it's a 10 pound weight gain. And I think the last thing is movements. Um, I started feeling movements like little pokes and stuff. And so now it's a little bit more, um, not like super intense jabs and kicks. I don't feel like I'm there yet. Um, I have a feeling it's, it's close to happening, but little movements here and there. Um, there's times where there's not a whole lot happening movement wise. And then it's more when I'm relaxed, I can actually feel it. So that's always cool. I think that's one of my favorite parts um, of pregnancy is being able to feel the movements. And they do get a lot more intense <laughs> as it progresses and we get closer to delivery, which my due date is in March. It's not something that, you know, you can kind of see like on the outside too much yet. Um, there have been moments where it's been like little, you know, a little bit stronger than it used to be, but not where they're like somersaults and it's like something crazy happening inside of your, your stomach area. Um, but I know that that's going to happen, um, which again is another exciting part for me personally. So I have been excited to feel that. And I, you know, feel those movements just kind of like randomly. There's really no sort of pattern that I've noticed. I know it's just, just like when I'm sitting more relaxed, but because I'm so much on the go, constantly like on my feet for most of the day, I feel like that's why there's not a whole lot of action happening <laughs> um, during the daytime. But I do feel like once I kind of settle and I'm sitting and eating or, you know, in bed at night, I do feel a little, you know, I feel something happening. So that's always an exciting part. So I think that's pretty much it. I don't really have any like super new things, not a whole lot. I think the lower back is like one of the ones that sticks out on the top of my head. That's fairly new from my last update. Um, and then just of course, you know, it's just a typical thing. So I'll keep you guys posted on my next appointment and how that goes. And then you should be seeing a gender reveal coming up very, very soon. I um, need to kind of narrow down what I'm gonna do. Um, to share that with you guys but I'm excited and I'm gonna see if I don't know maybe I can somehow involve the kids in it and do a video and share that with you guys that's super exciting um, but that is it I appreciate you guys so much for tuning into today's video and keeping along with this journey and just being here and actually caring about the pregnancy and just me in general and I appreciate that so much and it means the world to me so you will be seeing another update soon and that one is probably going to be a little lengthier this one was a very quick kind of update um, and of course we'll do a bump shot so you guys can see what the bed looks like at the moment of filming this um, it's probably going to be bigger by the next time you see it And there you go. That is it. I hope you guys found this helpful. If you are expecting, congrats to you and I hope everything is going well. Um, stay tuned for the next update. Subscribe so you don't miss out on when that gets posted. You can also follow me on social media. I have Instagram, which is where I'm most active and that's the one that I am um, kind of sharing on the screen. It just kind of pops up in my videos. Um, because I had so many like social media platforms and I just had to kind of narrow it down to the one that I use the most. So it's Instagram. So if you want to tune in and kind of spend some time with me off camera, that's the place to find me. And I hope to see you there. And I hope to see you in my next video. Take care.